Uh, tonight, uh, Dr. Carey is going to give us a presentation of our bond uh, that we're looking to do, capital improvement bond presentation. Um, she's going to be going through a lot. There'll be um, some questions that are going to be answered at the end. And at the end, when the presentation's all over, that's when we'll ask the audience to give us some uh, questions and we'll answer them the best we can. Thank you all for coming out tonight. I'm very happy to see you all. So the, as Bob said, this is our, our bond presentation and this is our request to the taxpayers and the uh, community members of our district. So this is how we got to where we are right now. In December of 2016, I asked uh, Bob Lesko, our facilities director, to come up with a five-year plan for all the four, the four elementaries and frontier. So we had a five-year plan uh, presented to the school committee. Also at the time, we received a $30,000 gift from a neighbor, who was a neighbor? Charles Mark. $30,000 gift and a $40,000 scholarship. And the $30,000 gift was to upgrade the finishes in this, this library media center where we are in. And uh, when we came to uh, really getting down to the, the nitty gritty of what, how we would spend this money and what it, where it would go, then we realized we can't do anything until we finish or take care of what's going on up there. As you can see, those uh, tiles are damaged. There's leaks all the time. Um, the windows, there's, they call it clear windows. The baskets are coming off. We uh, presented. It's, it's our roof. It's our roof right now, <laughs> making a noise. We presented, um, I think, uh, just, just saw some drips coming down. So we presented a $270,000 uh, quote or request to the school committee to just take care of this. And then we, they talked and they said, well, this is a school committee in light of the five-year plan and with an eye to the future, they said, why don't we do a complete listing of everything that needs to be upgraded and talk about how much it would cost to procure a bond. So then we came back the next month, Patty Kavanaugh came back the next month with the impact to the towns for 10 to 20 years. In September, we talked about it again. We have uh, some scenarios there. And the school committee said, okay, now we need to get a joint school committee with our town select persons and our finance committees so that we can really bring it out into the open and talk about it. So then we plan this meeting tonight and you're all here. So thank you. Uh, so tonight the agenda is uh, to provide detailed information about the facilities needs, to discuss the impact to the towns based on the length of the bond, and then to convene a capital improvement subcommittee to go through that request list and to develop a marketing plan. Because this is very important to this building, to this school, to this community, to our four towns, that we maintain the integrity of this building. So again, how did we get here? Well, a lot of questions are, is this deferred maintenance? What happened? Why all of a sudden all these little nickel and dime things building into this big $3 million bond? Well, generally requests for funding projects, especially those that are more than our regular operating budget could handle, but we're not yet large enough to meet the threshold of capital projects. A threshold for a capital project is over 25,000 and a 10 year lifespan of whatever we're replacing or fixing. Uh, it has been generating more and more discussion at budget time. When we sit down with the school committee, we talk a lot. We talk about athletic fields, we talk about the infrastructure, we talk about this, and we, we know that these costs are there, but again, we're focused on academics and meeting the needs of the students and getting the technology there. So when it comes time to sit down with these, the budget subcommittee, we talk about what we need, but it, we're always, the building is always the one that's deferred because the students come first. So then we began to compile this five-year plan 
as we did this, it became evident that we need a funding mechanism to deal with these small little things. So the threshold is 25,000 and a 10 year lifespan. Now, this is an example of what we're looking at every year when we're looking. So we have $60,000 in our yearly budget that was passed for building general repair. So 11,000 is for recurring annual contracts. They're security and lawn testing, phones, kitchen equipment, more phones. So that stuff we have to do, and we, you know, the elevator, all these things need to be tested and taken care of. Right now, this year, we've already spent $20,000, not including that $11,000, just on things. For instance, the roof over the music room was leaking. Um, the band room, the, the classroom part, not the auditorium, that was leaking. We need now $8,900. We have three exterior doors that are not closing securely. Bob was out there working on one this morning, and it's just not closing tightly. And then when it's closed, you can't open it to get in the building. Uh, I, we need some valve replacement. The girls' locker room is being overheated. We have um, unusable drinking fountains, two of those. We have duct detector, detectors that bypass the alarm system, and those are 600 each. So that's leaving us right now today, November 1st, with $14,000 for this building for the next eight months. So again, why now? The bond will ensure safety, health, accessibility, and suitability for the learning environments for our current and future students. It's our responsibility to preserve, protect, and update this current facility. And what we found over the years, what they have found and what I'm learning in my tenure here, the Band-Aid approach is not the most effective way. In other words, doing these things, small pieces here and there that's not really effective and all these multiple repairs, we keep trying to fix the phones, we keep trying to fix these ceiling tiles, all these things that we're trying to fix, it doesn't, it really doesn't completely take care of it. We need to upgrade, replace, fix. So the aging, uh, the building is aging and the higher yearly operating costs will uh, eventually cost us more. So when did we have the last bond? The last bond was in 1998 for $22,350,000. $22, $22, and the final payment was made in 2016. So tonight we're asking for 3,000, roughly 3,400, 3,400,000. So we have taken the request the needs of the building and put them in priority areas. So safety and security, our infrastructure to ensure the health and safety of the students, staff, community, and visitors. This building never sleeps, we all know that. The infrastructure upgrades uh, to the existing systems that address the equipment reaching to the end of its life, increase, we'd like to increase energy efficiency and optimize our operational re reliability. I don't know if anyone is here from the Deerfield Fire Department that uh, has come out twice in the last week at 2 a.m. But athletic facilities, uh, we need some upgrades to our gym, our locker room, and our fields uh, because we have to ensure the safety of the students and our tradition of strong athletics and we want to support our students. Our, our athletics, as you know, Frontier Athletics, we keep a lot of kids involved, we keep a lot of kids engaged in, in positive, positive activities and it's important to us that families, if you're a parent of a student who's engaged in some kind of, you know, some kind of athletic endeavor or a fine arts endeavor, it's very meaningful and it enhances their experience as high school uh, students. So I'm just going to go quickly over these. When we look at security, we'd like to replace, repair and replace the clock bells and the controllers. Right now, when we want to change the clock controller, it takes a week to change the clocks? Well, it doesn't take a week, but it's a painful process to so use a phone dial pad as opposed to yeah. so, the interface material. And we'll talk about the interfaces after. Our intercom system and speakers, what's happening is our intercom doesn't really work outside. 
if and in parts of the building students can be uh, in a place where they're not able to hear so if we do a lockdown they're actually not getting the announcement so they're not locking down if we have a, re a reverse evacuation which means we need them to come off the fields and come in the building for protection um, we we can't reach them we need to upgrade our intercom and our speakers uh, the generator connection what we're trying to do with that is we have a generator that's in good condition but we're not positive all our connections are where up to the up to where they need to be for the standards of being an emergency re response site we want to make sure that things are right on the uh, right where they need to be windows and blinds these treatments uh, are necessary for lockdowns we need to be able to uh, close the shades or close the blinds so that the kids you, they can't be seen from outside. The hardware on the interior doors and closures. Uh, we need a latch in the middle of the doors for ADA compliance and to provide automatic closure in case of fire. We have doors that aren't working and I'll show you. We need to rekey, we, we need to rekey all the exterior doors and create secured entrances. We'd like to install a card like a card swipe system. What happens now is we have master keys and I think everybody pretty much a lot of many 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 people have them and so we've been called you know 1 30 in the morning the police say the school gym is wide open uh 1 30 in the morning I've came I've come to to do some work on a Sunday night at 8 30 the door in front of my office is propped open um, so what we'd like to do is get um, a swipe system where people can enter the building and the keys would be kind of obsolete except for interior doors, but this would be, um, we can hand it out, but we can also manage it. So if you're a coach, you have one, you use it between these hours, if, you know, whatever. So, um, so you can see, so for instance, this door is not working properly and it's propped open with a wedge. That is against fire code. That's against fire safety because once the alarm goes off, you need to close, these automatically need to close. For instance, this door automatically closed tonight when our power went off. It has this mechanism. That's what we need here. But the problem with having it wedged, we're breaking fire code, but we're not respecting ADA code. So we're kind of in a situation where we, we need to get it done right. And these older doors, they're not working properly. They're wedged open. And so this door in the middle is sort of what we're looking for, these kind of mechanisms with this. Uh, fire safety, electric doors to the corridors and stairwells because we don't have electric door holes for them. Um, repair or replace smoke detectors and duct detectors. Currently these systems are malfunctioning, sometimes more than once a week, and leading to unnecessary fire department calls late at night. Um, we need to upgrade our fire alarm panel. The technology and the software has improved dramatically in the last 20 years. We're still running on a totally different obsolete interface. Uh, the kitchen hood fire suppression system, it's water-based now. We need to make it chemical based to protect in case of oil or any, any burns like that. So for life safety, our drinking fountains, we need to replace and upgrade those. And we need um, complete replacement of vinyl and stair treads. And we've been trying to do that. Um, so this is what we have now. Two of those aren't working. This is what we'd like to have where it's filtered water and it's it's good for the kids to drink and we do want to encourage them so they need to be upgraded um, this is our our stair treads we have we have replaced the main one coming up but we're kind of doing it piece by piece if there's money left over at the end of the year we're trying to use that money to, to take care of this but this is clearly a safety issue and this is uh this is what's happening <coughs> Now, even though we've replaced some, we haven't replaced everything. Um, you can see the lockers, you know, are those are going to. So we're talking again about the library media center, and uh, we need the interior finishes. 20 years of teenage use, 
It was, um, it was regular use. It, nobody came in and defaced the property, but to a teenage use, um, Mr. Decker was going to sit in a chair tonight. He said, I can't sit in this chair, it's broken. Put the chair over there and get him another one. We do have a gift of $30,000, but we would like to, you know, the interior finishes and new carpeting and some new furniture. Uh, we need the, to, to take care of this envelope over this ceiling. I'll show you uh, the insulation, the lighting, and the ceiling. There needs to be safety upgrades to this mechanical space, which is quite a, quite a thing up there. And we need to enclose and upgrade the HVAC in the Library Media Center. So these pictures show what's up, up, these pictures show what's going on. So this is what we have now. And we're going to replace those. But inside here, I think Bob can tell you better, but this is inside what's going on up there. And there's really nothing. This is, I think, our HVAC. Is that the HVAC? That's an HVAC. Yeah. So it's not enclosed. What's going on up there is they're actually open to the air, to the... Anytime you go up there in the summer, it's 20 to 30 degrees hotter up there than it is here, and we're air conditioning, so we're losing heat. There's nothing above these tiles but a thin piece of insulation, yellow right insulation. There the oh yeah, right there, and that's it. And then the rest is right up to the uh, the cavern. And in the in the winter when we're heating this this area, the heat is going up there. It's you know. 23 degrees colder up here, so our heat's going right up out. And most of the ductwork and fan systems are up in that cold area. Yeah, you can see the, the ductwork. So, again, these are the lights. These are the lights into this room. They're over there. So, um, there's our duct wide open. There's a little bit of insulation here. Um, again, the HVAC is not covered, those ducts aren't covered, so anything coming through, we're losing energy through the, you know, the opening. But the idea that there's nothing above that except this can tell you right off that we're losing energy. Um, oh, again, this is uh, some of the finishes in the library. The rug's quite old and the ceiling. There's no sense in fixing those ceiling tiles because it leaves it just leaks all the time. Uh, so, infrastructure finishes. These are the things that we get to see. Floor tiles need repairing. Uh, we need to replace our entryway walk mat. Somebody says, well, do you need to? Why not just put vinyl? We have the vinyl. The mats are on top because if your feet are wet, you're going to slip. You need to dry your feet. You need to catch the sand, whatever, before you come in. And uh, carpet upgrades. Main office, auditorium, guidance offices, um, uh, the library media center, people, someone said, why do you need carpets? Why not just do floor tiles? We, especially in our elementary schools, we're replacing carpets with floor tiles because that's the best for a classroom where they eat and play and, and all of that. Um, rugs can keep a lot of stuff. But acoustics are very important in the auditorium. They're very important in this room. So we, that's something that needs to be done. Exterior painting, our eaves need to be staged, scraped, primed, and painted. There's uh, the interior painting. There's a lot of that that needs to be done. Uh, our metal partitions in the toilets have been used. Not, nothing's been vandalized or beaten, but they're just used. Uh, complete the installation of hand dryers. The hand dryers save money, and that's what we like to do. So you can see the eaves where you uh, have uh, all of these are different areas of the building that need to be scraped and painted. You can't really see much here, but you know, it's just, it just needs to be, you need to take care of it. They try painting it. Um, it needs a special kind of paint. It needs electrostatic painting. Down there is a roof underneath the, uh, underneath the kitchen. Uh, this is the auditorium, and this is, we talk a lot about athletics when we talk Frontier. Frontier athletics, <coughs> hand in hand. But Frontier and fine arts, our band, our string, our strings, 
our uh, musical theater, our theater. These are such important parts of what we are. Um, our fine arts, Jack Purcell. These are the important, other important things of what we are. And these are ways for students to excel and, and enhance their experience too. So you can see over the years, this is way up, this is just, just dirt. That's the air handling unit and it's just dirt that needs to be, we need to take care of that. The rug again is, same rug as here, it's, it's just gone through its lifespan. So when we look at the systems, um, we need to upgrade our energy management system because it's 20 years old and it's controlled by a computer from the 1990s. We need a new system to accommodate new, more sophisticated software to become more energy efficient. Uh, we need to uh, upgrade the controls for the air handling units. We need to upgrade the air conditioning compressor and condensers. We need to replace at least one boiler with a modular or burner replacement. We need to work on the demand control ventilation. We need to install snow guards on the metal roof over the kitchen exit. That's the one right to the left of the front door. Snow and ice slides right off that overhang. People use that. They come and go. The custodians, our kitchen workers, they're out there all the time going to the uh, dumpsters. Uh, replace the flashing and roofing around the curbs up on the roof and the air handling units to prevent any more deterioration. And the roof and the partial flats. So this is right now our energy management system. And you can see we're a little bit behind the times. The interface now is much more digital and more energy efficient. This is how we are working. So this is a 20 year old system that we're, we've been working on. These are the boilers. And I'm gonna ask Bob to well, actually, if you see the old, you can go pictures there of our old cast iron boilers. Um, they're, they're good boilers, they operate well. Um, boilers like this in, in some ways are problematic for many instances. It's really hard to um, hear you. Because they'll last Just for stand a up and, and speak up. That, these boilers tend to last for a really long time and they're very inefficient. These, the, the two boilers we have, either one of them can serve the entire school. Um, what we'd like to do is keep one of them as a backup and replace one of them with a couple of small modular boilers that would be more efficient. Um, down in the left hand corner there is a picture of the old uh, pneumatic air compressor that serves a portion of our temperature control system. We've been slowly replacing all of those pneumatic devices with electronic devices. We'd like to finish that project up and get that compressor out of the school. Um, that's our emergency generator. Um, it's a good piece of equipment. It's a diesel generator. Um, we want to do some uh, load testing on it and, and be sure it's serving all the loads that we think it is and, and that we've got it working right. And if there are some things, it does have a little excess capacity and we may end up adding some stuff to it. <coughs> So the parking lot, um, the parking lot, we'd like to upgrade the lighting control. They are LED lights, which is great, but they're not automatic. And we've already spoken with the, the town police and they agree that if, it would be fine if the lights would automatically turn off at midnight. That would save us money, that would save us energy, but we will turn them off because you have to turn them off manually. Um, there's some drainage structures in the parking lot that uh, are um, undermining the, the parking lot itself and we keep repairing, repairing, repairing. I think the town came in and helped us out uh, with something this year. We have this other stuff we use. Um, the lines, we need to upgrade the signage, uh, the cement a apron by the pavers. Um, where the students eat their lunch, and the sign in front of the school. Um, we'd like to replace that with an electronic sign board. So this is the parking lot, and you can see the areas where the drainage is just uh, deteriorating the, the asphalt itself. And uh, again, we continue to repair it, and even here you can see where it's, it's just starting to deteriorate after all these years. 
So we talked about equipment too. So we have a large field mower. Right now, we mow 20 acres of athletic fields. The current mower we use is 14 years old. Uh, we also would like to replace the small tractor mower because we're doing five acres of lawn. And I don't know um, about how other people, I think the school is, is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I think that it's so well kept up. I think all the maintenance in the school is, is very well done. Um, we'd like to replace the high lift. These are compact uh, portable scissors that can give you, get you up high so you can fix items like this without having to call in every time. Defer maintenance until you have a lot of maintenance and then get a genie in here. They're called genies to, to move you up. Um, it's, it replaces lights, banners, flags, working on basketball hoops. And we have a certain um, cleaning equipment auto scrubbers, buffers, and other cleaning machines that are certainly showing their age. So this is the, uh, the, the bigger tractor that's 14 years old, and this is the smaller one. And I believe both of them were bought used. No, that, so, the, the John Deere there was bought brand new okay. um, as part of the construction of 20 years ago? this school 20 years ago. Uh, the Toro Groundmaster was bought new about six or seven years ago. Um, it's been a great piece of equipment. It's made for doing the kind of mowing that we do. Um, it was bought that used, yeah. It's from the park. Um, its service does very, very well. Um, it's a very expensive piece of equipment, and it's something we'd like to think about in the future to replace it. So it was actually, it was bought six years ago, but it was bought used. So it's 14 years old. And they take all this to Hurley, Hurley and they also take care of those grounds. Um, athletic fields, uh, the rubber flooring in the weight room. Half the floor has been completed. The other half is carpet, which probably isn't the most sanitary thing in a weight room. The gym floor, and what's happening is we, we sand it and we, we, we buff it down every year and the lines are getting dull. We'd like to sand it and repaint the lines and then put a whole new finish on it. The air conditioner in the uh, aerobics weight room. We have an air conditioner in there because our students, we have students that are life skills students that have um, special needs and this is where they get their PE and they get their um, activity that's part of their program and there's different breathing things that, so we have an air conditioner in there. Um, the goal posts uh, need to be, you know, either replaced or repainted, but uh, the batting cage and that in the gym, the one we have is, is an older model and it's very dangerous when they go up to pull it up, down, it's uh, the, the wire cables, it's dangerous. We have 125 lockers in the boys' locker room and the uh, fence and the screens and the tennis courts. So this is the weight room. And again, this is used by so many children, so many students. But we also use it with our life skills kids. And you can see the rug is kind of deteriorating. You can see the rubber floor is great because it's easy to wash and clean. Um, this is the AC unit that's in there now. The rug is, you know, once they start ripping like that, they're a trip hazard. Some of our students, not great. Our other facilities, we'd like to install new basketball hoops and a lifting mechanism in the gym. Uh, the, ble the bleachers in the gym, the scoreboard on the football field is original from 1989. It still uses incandescent lights. Um, we need, when we talk about the lockers, we need electrostatic painting. You can't get a brush and uh, latex or even rust -Oleum. you can't do it that way. Um, pave the drive to the football field. We'd like a two inch overlay on the tennis courts. And um, our outdoor track is, uh, is, is not safe. We've got, we're going to try and stretch it for two more years. But at that point, I don't know, I don't know what, what we can do. And uh, it's a very, very expensive endeavor, but what we have for a coat is right in the range of what a new one costs. I was talking with uh, Rick Martin, the uh, superintendent of Franklin County Tech, and 
is, is sick. So this is what our boys' locker room, and, and this is not any un, unreasonable use. It's just boys over 20 years with their locker stuff, and they're rusting, and they're just and the blocks, there's many locks that don't work, they're broken down. Uh, these are our bleachers, wear and tear. A lot of people use the gym. There's all kinds of volleyball and um, basketball and great stuff going on in there. And something you really don't see in the pictures um, with, with, those, uh, with, with those bleachers is there's a system of wheels under them. Those, those bleachers for when we use the gym, you know, with, with, for classes or, or pulled back in, um, when we have a crowd in the gym, those bleachers expand out and there's a very elaborate system of electric motors and wheels <coughs> that open and close those bleachers. And they're, on their, they're getting to the end of their lifespan. It's a lot of use. Um, the school's been well loved and well used. So these are our tennis courts. And you can see what's happening there, um, and then the sheeting around it. Um, this, these, this is our sign that's original to the um, 89 project. It's the inc incandescent lights. I was told recently that they have to, to get it to work, they have to go up and clip, some nights they have to clip something to make it work because the, um, the wiring is just not okay. The goalposts, you can see where they are, they need either to be painted or they need to be replaced. The problem with doing this is there's some legal requirements we have about uh, having employees get that hot up there and we have to be following those. You know, we can't just go out and paint it with a brush. Uh, it, need, it needs some, you know, complete sanding and probably the best way might be to pull it down and do it or cost-wise it might be the same to get fiberglass ones, I don't know. This is our track and this is a problem. Um, the track is another, um, another important part of our school experience. We have 125 students that take part in track every year. That's, out of 630 students, 125, I think, is uh, a big number. Uh, and right now, we're borderline on being able to have meets here in this, uh, at Frontier. And of course, you know, hosting your own meets is very important, but we're not, we're not able to provide um, a quality track surface because the one we have is deteriorating so much. So, having looked at all those pictures, there's five scenarios that Patty Kavanaugh worked with our um, bond specialist to come up with. You all have those numbers with you in large print so you can see them. The, uh, this, the ban is the bond anticipation note. They're off for two years and I believe they're at two and a half percent interest. That would be the goal. The goal is two and a half percent interest and then the permanent bond. So I'm going to go quickly through those because you're going to be able to read them yourself. They're pretty self-explanatory. But, so this would be 10 years with a two-year ban, bond anticipation note, and then the, uh, the eight-year um, permanent bond. So there would be the total interest we'd pay, the $630,000. Um, this is each town broken down and this is the cost per $100,000 per, um, $100, house. So year one, if I lived in Sunderland, it would be $5.83. If I had a $200,000 house, of course, it would be $10 or $11. Uh, Waitley, um, here, and you can see it goes up. <coughs> but this is the amount of interest per town that each town would pay. And you all have these copies. Um, so this would be scenario two, and this again is 10 years permanent bond, two years ban, and again, it goes from 40 cents to, or 3.95 to 11.92 per $100,000, per $100,000 home. 
So again, scenario three, a two-year ban on a 13-year bond. You can see the interest going up there and um, the cost per home, per $100,000 home per town. On your copy of this, I think that zero didn't come out in the Excel. Uh, this is the uh, two-year ban and a 15-year bond. And finally, the, the two-year ban and the 20-year, 18-year bond. And the uh, tax implications to the home. So again, like for instance, in Lately, 395 and then it goes up to 17 comes down to 16 15 14 9 and then it goes down as the years go on so what are the next steps we're we're very flexible we're very open but we the first thing is to review the bond information with the town select boards and the finance committees and i thank you and we all thank you for being here tonight we're going to request the school committee consider convening a subcommittee to focus on the task of taking feedback from stakeholders and then, if needed, refining this list and creating a final number to go forward. I'm sorry about that little typo. Um, so this is something, it's not, we're not saying, you know, this has to be it, this is it, we're not flexible. We're definitely flexible and open to taking in everyone's, you know, but it's really the school committee's bond and it's up to them to, to make those decisions. We will develop um, a reference brochure explaining the high points, uh, the way I'm trying to tonight. We want to involve student staff and parents with a community information meeting so they can understand it. We want to work with FCAT to explain the bond and the underlying necessity of upgrades, and hopefully this will be on TV and help people understand. And we'd like to engage the local newspaper to communicate the plan, um, the plan published with articles. So we're hoping to have some articles. So the benefits of the bond, again, we want to protect the taxpayer's investment in our school by upgrading an aging infrastructure. We want to provide safety and security enhancements. We want to reduce maintenance and energy costs. Um, and we want to correct the Band-Aid approach so that in the end we can save taxpayers money. We don't want to just limp along. We really want to take everything in. Um, if these repairs aren't made now, you know, we just need to recognize that even with the continuous excellent maintenance that we do have, school's a beautiful facility, a larger bond will be required in five to seven years in order to overhaul the entire building as this facility and its systems age. It's, it's just, it's a fact of life. It, these, some of these things we showed you, you know, the, the peeling paint, the, you know, the things like that just need to be addressed. So I'm going to go through some frequently asked questions. Will all projects be included in one bond? Yes, the objective is to complete these needed projects in a timely manner before they become major problems. We're not at the crisis point yet. This is a roadmap to get us to be proactive to address what's coming down the road. This is the, the school committee has an eye towards the future and protecting this investment and that's, that's where we are. We're not a crisis on any one thing, you know, but these things are going to add up. Um, how long will it take to do the repairs? Probably within two, or three, two to three years to do them. If we do them in-house, not in-house, but if we did them and move them along in-house, then it'll take two to three years. Um, how was it established? Well, the list was developed by the facilities and maintenance director, school administration, and contracted service providers who work on our systems. What are the priorities? Has a list been created? The items on the list are the highest priority items. We hope to convene a subcommittee to provide further modifications to the list and maybe move on with that. 
So how did we compile this project list with the cost and lifespan? Because again, when you're talking about a bond, you need to understand that the lifespan of what you're, what you're purchasing or procuring has to last more than 10 years. So if it has a life of less than 10 years, that's a different story. Uh, we've asked vendors who normally do the work at Far Mountain uh, Frontier Regional School District to price projects that have been recommended or that we can describe to them. So they come in, you know, they're looking here and they're saying, there's a, you know, there's a problem. Uh, we have also estimated the cost of some work by using square foot multipliers or using the cost of projects done at other schools. We have used these figures to provide an order of magnitude for this work and we have tried to prioritize the things that represent the greatest needs. And there are more detailed ways to audit a facility. We've come up with this list, we've come up with these priorities, this order of magnitude, but they, they require um, money and we have not been, you know, allocated money to actually, uh, to fund this, an audit, an outside audit of the building. But we're pretty sure with the, with the people that we have, the vendors, the contract suppliers, the people that come in and inspect our systems, I think we, and we can show you with pictures what's, what's happening. So what is the cost basis um, associated with each item? We have included estimates based on cost for similar projects using the same square foot as our facility. So similar costs, again, input from the contractors that come in, the uh, other uh, schools. Um, what is the current condition of each item? What's the remaining use, useful life? Everything we showed you is reaching the end of its useful life. Will items be grouped for procurement reasons, like life safety, HVAC, yes. They will be grouped where practical, economical, and allowed by mass general procurement law. Will all of these projects be completed in one summer? If not, what is the proposed priority? Once the funds are secure, we'll create a schedule with a timeline for each item or each group of items. Will the bonding request require town meetings um, by each vote in the Frontier Regional School District? And the answer, of course, is, is yes. The, uh, the debt is uh, authorized. This comes from the Department of Revenue. Selectmen and member towns must be notified, and they have 60 days. Um, if they disapprove, if the majority of voters in a single member town disapprove, then the, uh, the uh, regional school committee shall not incur the debt. The committee is free to prepare another proposal or reintroduce the same proposal. Uh, has this design, <coughs> if required, been completed? No. A lot of these things people are asking, where did you get this cost or that cost? Or, and again, go back, we used costs from the people that are coming in, the contract providers, the uh, other uh, schools and their information. The bottom line is um, without a funding commitment, we can't get someone in to look at, I don't know, 30 items and tell us what an exact cost for an exact thing in this in this building so how much would a new security alarm system cost for this building with all of these how much would these ducts cost to replace and repair it's very hard to pin down that information without a, a funding commitment and sending it out to bid so uh, who will manage the bidding well, we'll use either an in-house team or it may be necessary to hire a firm to design, get costs and estimates, bid the projects and manage the work. We'd like to do it in-house, um, but it may require more than what we have, more um, effort than what we have. If a group of projects or an individual product, project procurement exceeds 1.5 million, will Frontier Regional need an owner's project manager. We're going to follow the appropriate mass procurement laws and use the inspector general's office for guidance. What procurement process will be used? Designer selection chapter 7 for bid documents and chapter 149 for construction or chapter 30 for solicitation of goods and services. 
We're going to use Chapter 30B for procuring the supply services in real estate and Massachusetts General Law 149 for any building contract and the designer selection process if required. So we, we're familiar with the, the things we need to do to do it right. And that is pretty much all I have, but now's a good time for questions. And thank you all. So what I've given you is um, a community letter that I have I've written um, that I'd like to send to the community. I've given you a copy of this PowerPoint. Uh, the, this is a copy of the list with the general estimates that we've come up with and how and we talked about how we came up with that. And this is the of the tax impacts to the towns, the five different scenarios and how much it would impact each town per one hundred thousand dollar household. Yes. Lynn, I have a question. Do you have a master plan as to how you're going to approach each project and what takes precedent over another? Well, we do. What we're going to do is request that the school committee be a subcommittee that would be the guiding force behind it. And then we love from there. We have a master plan. What, what, what we've done is try to put together, you know, I, I was asked in, in, in the long run what we needed here. We, asked, we were asked about a plan of things that represented maintenance, and that developed into a five-year plan, and that five-year plan has some numbers next to it. Um, there's a lot more that needs to be developed and, and fleshed out here um, in, in order to move forward, but what we're trying to provide is some sort of a, a, a roadmap that gives people an idea of where, where we really need to go. I think the, the only real danger we have here is that we don't do anything for the next three to five years. Um, any amount of these projects we do is going to put us in a better position. Um, but trying to have at this point um, in the discussion a very, very detailed plan of how we're going to do this, I, I don't think is, is the, best, the best way to go. I mean, one of the things we could have recommended and, and a way that the town would go would be to hire, you know, the auditor or an auto Boston or whatever, you know, and then take a look at these things and, and try to put a number on them. And I'm guessing that number would probably end up being a lot bigger than the one we put in. I guess we're getting there. If, 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 if you're going to talk, can you stand, stand up so everybody can hear you? We don't, this doesn't really show us a plan, it's just a list of the problems. And the way I, my quick overview of this is it's kind of like going to Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's on the way to get your uh, cholesterol medicine. And that uh, there's no sense in you know, upgrading the furnaces when you've got this huge hole where all the heat goes. And those tiles are not a uh, result of 20 or 30 years of being used. It's a result of poor judgment, lack of oversight. Those things have been leaking since day one. There's no insulation over there. And why? Who was involved with this? Why didn't they ask the question? The janitor was complaining 30 years ago. There's buckets from drywall hanging there to catch the drips, and it relied on evaporation to get rid of the water. And it's just, it's gone on. And I, I hate to be part of, you know, spending $50,000 on a furnace that's more efficient, but has to run twice as long because you've got this huge hole. You know, so it's important that you fix this structure, this portion, insulate to keep the heat in there, then you go into the more efficient furnace. And, and that's the type of thing that I see. And there's a lot of things here that it needs a better road to get to these. I'm not saying these things aren't important, but that's why we that's why we're going to discuss with the school committee about convening a subcommittee to help guide us. We've got enough brain power, I I feel, being here a year and a half, we have enough brain power to figure these things out. 
get a good subcommittee, and then make that timeline. But we don't have a timeline yet because we're at such an early stage. I would also like to say, if you can answer Kip, is we've been asking for many years for, for money to deal with this. I found records in my predecessor were asking for money to deal with this particular situation here. And, and one of the important things that we're trying to bring out to today is the district doesn't have a funding mechanism. Some of these projects in the 25, 10, 20, 15,000 dollar range don't fit a funding mechanism. They're not capital projects, but they're way beyond what we can do with our yearly operating budget. So whether it's, you know, whether we massage this somehow, how we implement it or whatever, the important thing is we find a way to find it. Yes, Jonathan, uh, Lynn and everybody else. Uh, number one, I appreciate all the hard work that's gone into this, obviously. You know, people have given it a lot of thought. Number two, I don't think there'd be many people in towns that wouldn't want to support improving and maintaining an asset that they have. Everybody understands that's pretty important. You can't let it fall apart. Uh, I do have some concerns, though. One, the subcommittee, who's going to be sitting on that. Number two, uh, without having uh, probably a little more uh, concrete numbers to these proposals, I get a little nervous when we talk about 3.4 million throwing the number out and wanting to go to town meeting and have voters approve that number without knowing specific costs. That makes me a little nervous. And, and the only reason I get back to the subcommittee is I think it's very critical to have people involved that do have a construction background, or at least some people that have some type of construction background to be involved with this effort. And I think it's a good effort, no question about it. But I think we learned with the elementary school, you know, you're looking at a $3 million roof and we're able to save ourselves some money. And also we're not to take a shot at one of our neighbors, but we'll bring it up. Some of us probably remember the middle school up in Greenfield, and they didn't have the right subcommittee, and it ended up turning into a fiasco, and it cost them a huge, huge amount of money, basically wasted. And I just hate to see us get to that point. I, I hope we proceed with caution here and really have a solid, fixed plan to know where we're heading and how we're going for this. You know, Kennedy just pointed out one thing. You know, you, you do the furnace, and yet we have a hole in the roof. Well, you know, we need to address the hole in the roof before we do the furnace. So prioritize, I guess, is what I'm saying. And I really do think that make up and having the right people involved. And I know sometimes that's tough to do, but hopefully, hopefully all the times to get together and get the right people. Is towards sort of building envelope. 
and what percentage, say, of the, of the building envelope being addressed? Because if we're not really addressing the building envelope, we're not really addressing uh, energy costs, ultimately. I know at various times you can audit, so you may have some information of the full program, but if you had to give us all our estimate, how much of that three billion would be going towards if, yeah, yeah, I'm not really yeah. sure if you're speculating of envelope as 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 insulation in the building or envelope in the fact that well, we need a good we need a good roof, we need a good structure. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm guessing because there's a lot of money in, in, in the estimates for roofing in, in this area here, probably ten to thirty percent of it at the cost of ten days. Related things in the building, and I will say a good percentage of the envelope of this building is is really good. I mean, you know, we've got a good building. Um, it's relatively well insulated. Um, it, it, the windows are in good condition. We've got some weakness. You know, this particular structure right here is the single, probably biggest weak point in our in our envelope. But those are the kinds of things that I was trying to get into the audit because of the kind of things in routine maintenance you just never can get to that were really important. So you, you do plan to address this, which is someone else's concern, but this is part of the 3.4 million. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I That's what I thought. Do you want to read this? Okay. Thank you. 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 Can we do 
this. And we get permission, but it's very, it's not keeping pace with deterioration. But we are trying to address these things, but we're so limited because the, the budget is, that's, we have a budget, we live on that. And we're doing the best we can with it. So it's not a question of ignoring these things. Tom Hutchison, County Administrator Conway. Uh, the Mass School Building Association has its accelerated repair program for roofs, windows, doors, and boilers that I think kind of wraps up some of the, the basic things that need to be addressed around the same time and also kind of naturally sets priorities. Uh, it may be useful to look at that program and uh, and, and and enter into that that particular process. Uh, they also, of course, have the um, the, the normal procurement process where your your uh, your schematic design phase will give you the cost of the total project. So it may be worth um, as we're thinking this through dividing it up into a design phase and a construction phase, um, and dividing it another way into the the um, the accelerated repair program uh, versus uh, the, the other items. Right, and that is certainly something that we've talked about. We've had the experience with the Deerfield Elementary Group, and it's something that the school committee can look look into or you know, direct us to look into, but um, we, we really felt that we would want to try it. I just want to respond to that. Uh, Deerfield entered into an agreement with the school uh, building authority. It cost the town of Deerfield nearly half a million dollars. The roof's been completed for over a year. We still don't have our money back. Uh, the people that we were provided with uh, did not help the community at all. They ripped us off the line. They blackmailed us. They forced us into bad decisions that we fought to finally overcame. It's as far as my experience, the only ones was the worst, the worst group of people that the community has ever dealt with in the three years I've been involved with. So our goal is to listen to all stakeholders and make sure when we make a decision, the school committee and or subcommittee, that we are taking into account all the stakeholders. And that's good at that. John? John Boreski from the Deerfield Finance. Well, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you said you requested money to fix this and you were turned down. Um, well, we've got, we have we applied for external funding or just funding here. We've asked over the year to do some things, um, really recently put together a package, um, and we've been given enough money to do some of the really critical repairs here. Um, and I believe that as we move forward, we are going to do this. Uh, you know, I've asked for money to work on the area of the year um, and, and some of the smaller projects. Yes. Uh, have I ever put together the whole thing like I just did? No. So, I'm not quite so I thought you said you would ask for the funds to have a fix, and you didn't get the money. So I have I'm sure there's a little component to this. And recently, I asked for some funding and was given some money to do the further repairs. Thank you. So, what had happened was the school committee gave us money to do tier one of six tiers. We sent this out, we did have um, uh, spent, uh, spent date CNH on our hands. Give us, um, they, they, we,
probably they'll be done before winter sets, but if not, in the spring, they'll be done before July. So this, we do have enough money for the most dire piece. But that doesn't take into consideration over here. We know nothing about that insulation, but outdoor air, uh, the HVAC is not enclosed, the ducts, all the energy moves. That is just something we're going to have. I listen carefully. I listen carefully to your list. They didn't address the sheet metal over here. What are they going to do with that? That's the problem. That's where the water's coming from. Meaning the metal, the metal, all that metal all the way around. It's all the I think all the moisture from all these kids goes up there. It hits that cold sheet metal condensate and runs down. I mean, I was up there the other day watching the drip. You know, it was pretty warm here. There were a lot of kids. We went up through mm -hmm. the snow hole. It was 20, 30 degrees colder up there. See all of that sheet metal sweat is going to continue to happen. If we properly use like ventilate that space, that condition can stop happening. And, and I, I've noticed a little bit of condensation up there. I haven't noticed huge amount of condensation. That's, there were only 15 buckets of these up there that time when I was there. And that's so, strategically to catch those. So the architects, um, you have a really they haven't really put that in there, but again, we would go into that if we were, if we were to get funding to do something. But that's important to have some of the cold stuff to make sure that that's the avenue that's right. safe so we don't end up with just insulation and have condensation right through that. And the police would still be there. Sure. Okay. Um, Amy Edwards from Whitney School Committee. Um, I just have a few questions, comments. Um, has any thought been given to grants or gifts that might be able to cover some of these items that seem like they be particularly energy related items? There's lots of, at least for your own ways to get clean energy or renewable energy sources. I don't know if that's something that we've thought about. The solar is it okay to so get through solar energy? There are grants, but the grants are for different specific things that that don't fit into what, what we need. So the grants that would do this, like there, there might be an energy grant that would change the lighting, but wouldn't really address a leaky roof. Yeah. And we well, wanted to just everything, but I guess I would encourage us to make that more grants could be packed into. And even you know, yes, like a new scoreboard. There might be some nice generous person that would be willing to give a lot of people to work for. We do have to have correlates. But we're using that to make the track appear because the track is. Right. Um, and the other thing is to think about is any thought given to what the impact will be on the operating budget from all of these changes because. Sometimes when you put in new systems, you need new skills, you might need more people. Hopefully, maybe the opposite would be true, that you wouldn't need as many people to maintain all of this going forward, or it might impact electricity costs. I think it would be really helpful to make a good argument to the towns that you know some of these investments might actually save us money in the operating budget down the road. It would be important to identify if it's going to increase costs in the budget down the road. I would also encourage us to think about addressing this capital budgeting need long term so that we don't run into this five, ten years down the road. And that is our My name is Sean Paterk. I'm from the uh, town of Deerfield Finance Committee. I've got 30 or 40 questions, but I'm not going to ask all of them. You've got five minutes, John. Thank you. Okay. Install and replace hand dryers, what's wrong with them? We, we've got a few hand dryers here in the school. Um, they were put in pretty much on the cheap. They don't work very well. And most of our, most of our bathrooms don't have these dryers. We spend a huge amount of money for paper products every year. Um, what I like to do is put hand dryers in all of the bathrooms. Why are we putting this a five year useful life into a 10 or 20 year bond? Why are we going to pay 10 or 20 years, pay off something, that's only a five year useful life? That doesn't make sense. That was pulled out, Mr. Kishore. So if you look at the 
column that says you to like five, that's not included because that's exactly what the bank told us, that that should be a budget item. So they're listed because they, Mr. Lesko listed them as a priority. So we don't want to take them off. So when we go to budget time, we're going to be increasing our budget, hopefully, by the $20,000. And that is not included in the total market. Next one is upgrade parking lot lighting control. How many flips of the switch do you have to turn off the lights? And in that, when you have to come back here and turn off, open the door to come in and shut it off? Yeah. How many switches do you have to set? The upgrading isn't great, but I'm really not looking, really, we've got a time clock that turns them on and off. Mm -hmm. What we don't have is... They really put in a time clock, you get time clock up anywhere from four to ten controls. So instead of coming in, you can turn your time clock, they can have astronomic time clocks that automatically adjust the base upon daylight. You're absolutely right. What we don't have is the proper circuiting so that we can turn the lights on the building on all my security purposes and turn the lot lights off and on. You know, we're, we've really been keeping, we've got a time clock on these, we shut them up, we turn the lights on at dark and, and we can turn them off in the morning. What we'd like to do is turn off the parking lot lights at midnight but leave the lights that are on the building for security purposes so when the police come in here at night to control the property and move people around, we've got some amount of security still. I just find that the $5,500 figure is a little tired to me. Being a retired electrician, I have a time. I have a problem with the place of paint gold balls. There is a uh, thing that the Sheriff's Department offers in Franklin County. They send our people out and do painting for free. You have to provide the paint, the brushes, the ladders, and stuff like that. But they paint for free. They just did half the church over on Sugarloaf Street. They only go up so high, and that's all they go up. They, all the high stuff has to be painted by a commercial paint. So when it comes to painting goalposts, maybe we can get them up that high to paint the goalposts, and maybe what you say, take it down. But I think twelve and a half thousand dollars just seems high. It's all new basketball hoops and lifting mechanisms. Last time there were lifting mechanisms on there. It's called a hand crank, but there's nothing wrong with that. Actually, we've got a motorized system for lifting our, our uh, hoops up and down now. We're all not. The problem we have is they're, they're, they're used so frequently that cables are always jamming up, and it costs us, we have to bring a specialized company in to work on those because there's huge safety issues both crowds in the gymnasium and we can't just, you know, when those tables get bound up, we have to bring people in the system and it's very expensive over here. And how about replacing the bleachers in the gym? What's wrong with that? You don't have anybody that can find out what's wrong with it and repair them? You're going to spend $180,000 on that? We've been, we've been repairing. We spend a substantial amount of money every year repairing all the mechanisms under the wheels and those wheel structures need to be replaced. Um, something that we can do at and work this bond a little higher is make a decision about whether the cost of replacing those wheels is significant enough that it would make more sense to just replace the wheel. I think that's the conclusion we will find in the here, but I can't be sure of that. All right. The, uh, the place 125 lockers in the boys' gym locker room. It looked to me like you had a little surface rust on there. Is there any reason why that can't be just sanded down and painted? Some of the mechanisms, they don't, they don't close, they don't lock, they're kind of broken. Um, many are broken, but um, again, it takes a lot
two, three, three more times on the one boiler. Do you know what the efficiency is on the boiler? I do. I, I can't tell you off the top of my head. I'll give you an example. Pardon me? I'll give you an example of what can happen. I had an old furnace in one of our houses. The guy came in and said, oh, you need a new furnace. That's why it's broken. I said, no, that's not why it's broken. It needs a control line. The furnace is fine. He said, oh, this thing is so inefficient, it's never going to heat on it. Well, guess what? They cleaned it the year before, and it was 86%. And you know what a new one was going to be? 88%. So for 2%, they wanted you to spend six or $7,000. Because people will try and sell you something that you don't need. So my question is, you got to get somebody who knows what those units are and determines whether there's something wrong with them or not. And I can't tell you, but I know that I did one for the town of Deerfield once when I before I was a one. And what I did was we went into the senior center to find out what was wrong with the heat. We got built over twenty thousand dollars for gas heat over there. And come to find out all it was after we traced it out between a heating guy and myself, that one of the units was on and open all the time, and no matter what happened, that thing would crank out heat 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. After we shut off that thing, it solved the problem. So it cost them about $400 to have this other guy and myself find out what the problem was. And then the bill went down from over $20,000 to under $4,000. And that, that, for me, it shows a little bit of common sense and ingenuity can go a long way. My second to last time, one of the last things I do is pay the drive to the football field. I don't think anybody can give me any good reason why we have to pave a driveway to a football field. Everybody walks out there. For just having a EMS vehicle go out there a few times a year, it ain't worth paying. To me, that's a waste of money. So we were thinking about ADA uh, requirements. ADA does not require a paved driveway to a football field. Graduation. And, I, and anybody with common sense would know that. So when we have graduation, to you know what three or four of those of TRG would cost to straighten that out? Not a heck of a lot. A couple of grand you could do it. My last comment is if you're going to have a subcommittee, I hope you're smart enough to take and have at least 50% of the subcommittee to be local contractors who really care about the school. Mm -hmm. I want local contractors and not people sitting on there saying, Oh, I want a beautiful building. I want a building that's functional. I want to fix this. Oh, the money drops me first. That would be my first priority because that's been bad from day one. And Kitty Bright, when he says the problem is the uh, moisture from body heat going up there, condensating, coming down, and that's why most of these tiles. So that's all my comments. Thank you. Sherry Patch, Sutherland Town Administrator. I just wanted to comment on grants and other potential funding um, resources. Um, several of the projects listed would be eligible under green communities. I did reach out to Jim Berry, who's our coordinator, and um, he did say that several of those projects would be eligible. There's a process where we would need to add the um, frontier to our energy reduction plan, one or more members of, of frontier. So that's something that we should explore and look at. Um, and then the other, um, I wondered about CPA funds also for some of the recreational um, needs. And um, recently the town got a technology grant uh, to improve our phone system at the town office building. And that was about $25,000, but it's gonna save us in our operating budget because it's gonna cut our phone costs in half when we get, we'll have a voice over internet protocol. So I think as we're moving forward, some of the conversations need to continue to explore different funding um, sources and opportunities for us, because there are some out there. Great. And, and, uh, that's, that's great. I think the CPA funds, uh, I might be wrong, but I helped put together the test scores to begin with, yes. and they might be good to
the Center of Economic and Finance Committee, and this in terms of this is a very detailed process, a lot of steps. I think you would be probably getting a lot of other suggestions and ideas. Some more minutiae as we do not look for a question of fiction, but it'd be really good if you can have a central repository. And if you can access the questions that being asked at Grantham to avoid duplication. And the other thought would be in the world of bonding, if you're expensive, you send you farm requirements, and you think about each debt service and point that you can use, and pick up on what this one will share here from someone that looking at all the funding sources that might have initially a higher interest rate and a lot more on, but they actually determine the minimum fees out and it might be more cost to cover the original values. Okay. Yes. Do you prefer Rosky play this slide for it's in you're probably reading the newspapers uh where the is the remodeling of town hall trying to remodel uh the bottom really the assignment contract soon. It took us six years to get this far. A lot of studies, some, uh, several committees with our consultants, and a lot of money went into studying the design and, and feasibility of, of remodeling the town hall. Uh, two things that come to mind that I think you need to consider is the credit that we went through, that it took us a while, is the credibility of the estimate and putting together a funding package. Uh, we had a subcommittee of local people working, starting six years ago, with involved contractors, subcontractors, uh, home remodelers, uh, mortgage consultants on a committee to come up with a project. Uh, we ended up hiring a consultant because people didn't believe all the numbers that these people were coming up with because they had to come to a whole package as a project. So we hired a consultant to do that. The consultant, as you know, came up with a, a large project with the funding that the voters did not support. They didn't want to spend over $3 million. So we went back to the drawing board, hired a consultant to look at something more reasonable. And that consultant helped us put together kind of a funding package of not only uh, town funds, but also state funds. Uh, they helped us write proposals for the grants, for the agreements. We were successful to get some of the grants. Not all of them, but we did get some of them. And also that, uh, that, that consultant helped us develop a reasonable, a reasonable cost estimate that our voters finally approved at a meeting. The cost estimate that involves several sources of funding, not going one bond, one mortgage for one debt for the whole project. There was a multiple of sources, multiple sources that supported that project. And that's how we that's how we were successful in getting our project to this stage. And this my final comment, if you're on the subcommittee, it's fine, but I think you should consider not only the people on that committee, but maybe looking at hiring a professional person or, or looking out for a professional to help you finalize, pull it all together. That's the problem we have. The people wouldn't believe us. But we needed somebody that was knowledgeable expert, and expertise in the area. And there are other projects in the area like that. Deerfield's proposing one, uh, I don't know, Conrad Shelburne, remodeling a building, have they at Sunderland? There are projects like that, similar to not, not a school, but remodeling older buildings. And there are consultants out there, design consultants that can help you do that. We've had several submit proposals when we were looking for consultants. So it's not just one person going out there. There is consultants out there that can help you. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, one quick question, and that's for the members of the Deerfield Finance Committee. We have a meeting that starts tonight. So, we have a meeting. Uh, when we did the roof of the Deerfield Elementary School, we ended up subjecting the book to a debt exclusion. There's no way that any of the towns can afford this without debt exclusion. So you need to build that into your, into your timing framework, too. Uh, just to give you an example of why that's the case, in Deerfield, at least, we have a, approximately, we raise about $10 million a year for taxes. 
and two and a half percent. That's what we're allowed to increase the the debt by. It's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. If I look at this here, at least on this one example, we would need to take that whole thing to cover the, the two hundred fifty thousand that we would have to pay for it. So it does need a debt exclusion. And again, for the five of us that are here. We do have a financial meeting at 7 30. Another really quick question if you want to. Um, Bruce Hunter, uh, Get Field Finance Committee. Are there any items? I know you looked at a five year plan, capital improvement plan. It seems like we're looking um, for a 20 year or something maybe shorter bond period. Are there any envelope items that would exceed the five year plan that we haven't looked at? The flat roof one, when that needs to be replaced or upgraded and repaired, and when would that bond be? So originally what happened was when we came forward, Darius knows this principle. Um, when we came forward with some of the original big ticket items, the school came back and said, listen, if we're going to go out for a bond, you need to make a list of everything you're going to get in the next 10 years that's going to fail. Because once we go to town, we can't go back again. And that's why there's this extensive list that some of them could be, well, that's not working yet. But Bob, we were thinking, well, Bob, don't, you know, you can't ask them, you can't look, you know, you can't look twice. You know, um, so some of these items that we know they're going to be got, if, if we can get ahead of it and not try to fix it after the report, you know, that increase costs, that that's where this is kind of built. So these are all, we can get this. The school's built, it got us 20 years. We gotta get to 20 more. And if we cause we have to do an update of your systems to get it 20 more years. If we don't update those systems, we're not gonna get to those 20 years without recurring costs and with the end effect in the product we have to do. We talk about all about what we do here and what we do well here. And I know we're the, and one of the things about the committee that this is gonna be talking about is if we have all of us to give it in, every line item that's on that list, we'll get nowhere. It's got to go to the committee, it's got to go to the committee that we trust it, that we can build, build a bond together that says, listen, we're looking for $3 million, you know, to move for the next 20 years. And guess what? In 20 more years, they're going to need another bond. This is building the whole roof stack to be done, and everything else is going to be, it's the way the cycles of schools work. And so, you know, that's what we have to do, you know, make sure that we're financially sound, we're, we're looking into um, grants and doing all that things along the way, but we can't get to that spot without spending a lot. And that's the other thing. People are talking about, hey, you know, can you look at you know, these costs? Where are they coming from? They are estimates. They're estimated by a professional who's been around the block a few times and has some ideas of where these costs are. Some of them a little high, some of them might be higher. They have to estimate up, and maybe those costs are coming down. You know, so we're here, what you're saying, we gotta get, we gotta get moving on this because some of these costs are not going to go away. That track is the cause of a public or eventually. If we had the campus track, which is the biggest, you know, athletic event in this, in this building. You know, we brought, a team, we brought a team out here this summer to look at the track. We were just having service. We were going to cheap weather. They said, listen, you were service that. We got three or five years, we were serving in again. So we said, listen, this is where we're at. So we're doing. We're doing the research, we're looking into it. I mean, I agree that you know, we don't have every expert in Western Mass on it, but that's kind of what I'm supposed to say. You know, I'm just well, I, I agree with you. I agree with you, but there are major items in, in, with this envelope that we haven't looked at. And I'm not sure the life is, we have another 20 years to let them go without any major repair. And I think you bring up a great concern. It's 10 years from now. Right. What does he miss? Exactly. But there's also a point where we got to step forward at some point. I mean, it's, it's not like, what part of the roof envelope is going to give out in the next 10 years? And, you know, Bob's been out there looking around trying to, you know, take different spots, but, you know, I guess. I understand that what we need to do, but there are additional things that if we're going to put a bond together, we might look at something that was done in five or six years in part of the bond payments. Thank you. Yes. Scott Rivers on the top side. I appreciate the probably uh, third, fourth, fifth team pass that visitors for the time of creating this list. That said, uh, two points. One, we see two questions. The first is uh, was uh, really the range factor involved in any of the structures? Work related to heating, air conditioning, all those that's going to be required.
fire improvement at the base. Secondly, uh, and it grew to Sherry's point and uh, some, some magic items. And you know, in private industry, not only is that you're taking, you need to create a magic list, you get to that like plus 30, that uh, principle uh, we were just talking about, we get to this point, we have to get started, now it's time to apply. At the same time, this is going to be refined a little bit. And to slightly uh, like the point, that's where uh, a subcommittee of a working group makes a great deal of sense. But I can't emphasize enough, it makes it really great deal of sense to consider bringing someone in that percentage of total project cost, not lawnmowers, project cost, and recognize what the scope is going to be and how it's going to be funded. It's going to be a variety of funding mechanisms. I'm hard pressed to go to town of for a 10 year, uh, two year ban, 18 year bond for private inversion. You know, those kinds of things are going to be processed out. That said, I'm not critical of the last couple of the list and appreciate all the work that's gone into it. I look forward to helping out where it's possible. And I can't agree more with yeah. a couple of things. Most of our projects do have prevailing wage changes because we're using contractors that have to use prevailing wage change work here. And, and the other issue is, I can't agree more with a whole bunch of people here that have said we should have some more professional help here. We needed to get the list to initiate the discussion. And now that we've got the discussion going, maybe people are going to say, yeah, we need to get it. Because I do think we need some professional help with this. But I couldn't put that part before the horse. I had to get the list together to start the discussion. Let me just add one more thing. Two things people are going to be in this room at tonight. $3.4 million to make your room that won't remember anything else. There is an extra retail that's not aware of that.
with that said, I played on the school committee. There should be some proponents in here. Some of you guys have been around here for a long time. You, you know, come on. And some of you should be taking up this charge of let's get this thing done. Let's, let's, let's find out, let's get that funding from the towns into the school. You own it. Yeah, I don't think they, I think you guys own it. And if it doesn't happen, you own that too. Here 
who tries to drive the needs of this building over what the needs of the kids are at that point in time. I mean, it's just because you work for, for, for us. You don't work for Union 38. We elect you guys. You know? Come on. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're volunteers. We don't work at all. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, Phil, Phil is right. We've been, we've been playing this regional agreement for years. And I don't want to pick on any towns. You know who you are. But it's, we, well, I'm just telling the bare facts. We've been waiting to pay for a lot of kids over the years from other towns going at the front of the regional. And that's why we can't, that's why we can never get together and try to come up with a solution that everybody can vote on. You know, if we could, we would make life so much easier. We could come up with other ideas. We won't be looking for a 3.4 million dollar bond. Wow, but you can only do what you can do. And you can't change that tomorrow. None of us can change that. But what you can but what you can change is the monies that are coming in here, some of those monies that are fix the school and keep the school shiny and clean. And if you're not doing that with those monies, we got a problem. And here's the problem. You want to go, you gotta borrow a, a ton of money to throw into the house. Getting back to this envelope project going on here, so I think the committee has done a tremendous job, and Bob, let's go put these facts together, but you're still not close enough for the voters of the communities. I think you need to work a little harder, you need to talk to some other funding sources, and I think if you bring that back in the next couple of months to all our towns and four towns, I think you're going to get shot full of and I would want to see your hard work for Donald Drain because you're working greatly toward the future of it, but you're not complete, you haven't got a complete package yet. And I think you need to get that package totally complete before you bring it to the front of the boards. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <coughs> As I was listening earlier, even before that, I was thinking it might be helpful to have a slide about what we have done out of our budget, our yearly budget, because every year we do things and have tried to keep up the best that we can. And I, I don't want people to think the building is in a state of disrepair, because I don't think it is. I think it's pretty well cared for. I think but I, I hear what you're saying, and I know that you come tonight and you look at this big thing, and some of it are little things like a lawnmower. But I think it's important to know that's so preliminary. This was just, as Bob said, a list to start the conversation. We're a long ways from looking for town meeting votes, I think. Well, I agree. Well, Lynn has said tonight on more than one occasion that when they look at the budget, there's just so much money, and it usually goes to the kids. I heard, I heard Matt, Mom Parrott say that a half a dozen times throughout the years, and we're still in the same spot. And bus first is now track this. You know, I mean, it, well, you're never going to fix the track out of the budget ever. No. And you know, at the end of every year, the school committee um, does let us does. We are able to do things every year on the money the E and D the money that's left. They have agreed, again, to tier one on this so that it won't get any worse. They agreed to give us two more years on the track by doing, um, yeah. I mean, there's many, many things that we take care of every year that this school committee takes care of every year. So, um, and again, we're doing um, a great job there. Bob and his team, the building looks great. We, uh, we're doing the, you know, the stair treads, we're doing these things, we just, they're just getting ahead of us. That's all. You're not alone. You're, you're, you're like, like, you need your small views like my town You build a building. You don't want enough maintenance to keep it going for the next 20 years. 
What do you get at the end? Oh, just compare it to Judy. Uh, Judy here, Sunderland. Um, I want to challenge a little bit the comment that there has to be somebody on the, the school committee that challenges it, that puts the building in front of the people. Um, I, I think that's a dangerous comment to have. Our job here is to educate the kids that come to our school, and the choices that we make have a lot of cascading influences with school choice, people that choose to stay in the districts, the programs that we can build to support all of the kids that live in our towns and the surrounding communities. Um, I don't disagree that the building needs work. I wasn't here 20 years ago when we built this place, or even longer. Um, but it definitely has some problems, and I appreciate all the feedback that we had about the list and why the list is generated in different uh, funding sources. But I really, I really felt like I had to say that, that, that our expectation is that we teach the kids who provide for the people that live in our community. And the town's job is to, is to pay for that. And together, our job is to come up with a reasonable ex expectation every year for what that means. Thank you, Trudy. Sure. Anybody else? I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I thought it was a productive meeting, and we'll have many more. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.